In case you didn't know, we have a problem with rubbish in the ocean. You might know it as, save the turtles, but it's a way bigger problem than that. Everything is not doom and gloom yet, but if we continue using the ocean as a rubbish dump, all life on Earth is in danger. In this video, I'm going to explain a few things, and then talk about what we can possibly do to help, and give some ideas to try and stop this problem getting worse. This is Can He Make It? And you're watching... So what is Team Seas? Team Seas is trying to raise 30 million US dollars to remove 13,607,771 kilos of rubbish from our oceans, rivers, and beaches, or 30 million pounds, depending on where you live in the world. That is approximately 136,573 square meters of junk that we hope to remove. The ocean and the life within it are incredibly important. Besides the water we drink, the ocean produces around half the air we breathe every day. As well as feeding billions of people, mainly extremely poor people whose lives depend on the ocean for food. Like they go and catch fish for dinner every day. That sort of thing. So it's key that we keep it clean and healthy. If we see an increase in plastics in the ocean, that won't just harm sea creatures, but also us humans. From our food, water, and oxygen. The three critical elements to life, pretty much. Keeping our rivers and beaches free of rubbish is critical to everyone's survival. You may be thinking, I don't see like any rubbish in the rivers or ocean where I live, come on. Well that's because around 1% of rivers contribute approximately 80% of the rubbish flowing into the ocean. Then you might ask, well who's deciding to dump tons of their rubbish in their rivers? The parts of the world that literally have nowhere else to put their one-use rubbish. They have no choice due to poverty. Mainly. It is estimated that 150 million metric tons of plastic circulate the world's oceans. And an additional 8 million metric tons is added yearly. 30 to 50 percent of the rubbish that ends up in the ocean is less dense than water, meaning that it floats. 50 to 70 percent of the rubbish sits on the ocean floor. Half of the plastic that we use in the world is used just once and then thrown away. 10% is recycled and approximately 12% is incinerated by fire. The 13,607 tons that Team C is hopes to remove from the oceans and beaches will take care of approximately 15 hours worth of the world's rubbish. So sadly, this huge effort won't really do a whole lot. But the thing is, it's a big start. Part of our problem is, rubbish in the ocean affects plankton reproduction and growth. Why does that matter? Well, plankton is one of the most important group of plants and animal species on the planet. Phytoplankton turn carbon dioxide into part of their plant and release oxygen giving us around half of the oxygen in our atmosphere. The whales are the primary species that fertilize the phytoplankton through their feces or poo. In return, the phytoplankton feed the zooplankton, the zooplankton feed the fish and the whales, and ultimately everything that lives in the sea. So all marine animals seem to be affected by ocean plastic. There is now no way completely get rid of all the rubbish that is in the ocean. So we must figure out a way to slow down what is feeding us. Unfortunately, due to no easy way to get rid of plastics, that's the reason why it ends up in the ocean. But also, in most parts of the world, people are doing backyard burning. Burning plastic can be lethal, 
Chemicals given off from plastics in house fires are a major cause of death. But it depends on the plastic. Some are supposedly safe, others are definitely not. Neoprene rubber and PVC are a big no. Burning these plastics can release dioxins. Dioxin is a known human carcinogen, and the most potent synthetic carcinogen ever tested in the laboratory. The National Institute of Standards and Technology evaluated dioxin as over 10,000 times more potent than the next highest chemical. Half a million more times than arsenic, and a million or more times greater than all the other chemicals on the list. It is extremely cancerous. Also, once dioxins have entered the environment or body, they are there to stay due to their mysteriously strong ability to dissolve and bind to fats. Burning rubbish, often in the backyard, is a common method of junk disposal in some rural areas. Surveys have revealed between 25 and 50 percent of rural residents and farms may do backyard burning, which results in high levels of these toxic chemicals. Compared to incinerators, it has none of the air control, extremely high heat, or very expensive high-tech pollution filtering things. That is if they have been built to very high specs. Many incinerators generate electricity from the heat produced. So the plastic is sort of recycled. The farmers burning their plastic told me that they would absolutely be willing to recycle their plastic if they could. But they have to pay to even get rid of their rubbish in the first place. Same problem with the rubbish going into our rivers and ocean. But let's be honest. Plastic is essential these days, so what are we going to do about this problem? Clearly, this needs taken care of. Okay, so, I had an idea recently, after a bit of research. What if we recycled part of that half of the world's plastic into housing and building insulation? Everybody needs insulation, right? Just taking all those plastic bags found wrapped around your food, or around the farmers, whatever, and turning it straight into insulation seems brilliant to me. Potentially even being able to recycle expanded polystyrene. Plastic is an extremely good insulator. Working together with air in between the bags would bring it up to par with conventional insulation. If done right, this could be a cheaper alternative way easier to set up in certain parts of the world where recycling and rubbish disposal hasn't really been set up yet. I know there may be some holes in this idea. I would love somebody qualified to actually test this out. Our family where we live put in the effort of recycling our soft plastics. So all of this is being saved from going to landfill, at least in our family. When you actually collect all this stuff, you realize you use a lot of plastic. But what we have to do is we have to go drop it off at a grocery store, so that really doesn't work for large volumes. Somebody needs to figure out what we can do with a whole bunch of this stuff. Like bubble wrap. Pretty sure everybody knows it's great insulation. My hand is extremely warm right now. Why can't we stick this together and put it in a wall? This is everywhere. This is everywhere. That crumpled together, taped up or something. Bags. And you stick. All this plastic in here. Surely that would be a viable solution. Somebody tell me what I'm thinking wrong here, but this sure seems like it could work to me. What can you, on the other side of the screen, do to help? For one, you can donate to Team C's on their website. Every one dollar is a little bit of rubbish out of the ocean. Go to teamseas.org if you want to donate. Link in description. Or, number two, next time you're at the beach or river or stream and you see a bit of rubbish, pick it up. Dispose of it properly. 
I think that's probably one of the best ways that you can contribute.